In today's video, evidence that high protein diets alone will not prevent muscle loss. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and I know it's been a minute, but I'm back and uh, I'm gonna do five videos in five days this week and we're starting with a banger, starting with a video that I'm really excited about because I got my new issue of Mass, the monthly application and strength sport. And this month I'm gonna review an article written by Eric Trexler, who is one of the newer writers. And what's exciting about this is that it gives us some insight into a very specific time in our lives. So the article discusses what happens when we become detrained. Detraining means we lose the stimulus of training. Well, for a lot of us, that's a reality right now, right? We're having to change things around. We're missing out on gyms. So we're having to figure out ways to attenuate or prevent muscle loss. And that's exactly what this research showed us. So they had a pretty cool study design as well. And if you're interested in this type of information around building muscle, losing body fat, having the physique of your dreams, hit subscribe. That's what I love to do here with my channel. And this study design was so good because what they looked at was a single individual and they immobilized one leg and left one leg to move, okay? So you don't have a study design where you're dealing with people with different genetic makeups, okay? So the same person was given a diet of either what they considered high protein, moderate protein, or very low protein. And they were given a brace for their leg. So on one leg, they were prevented from moving it at all the other leg, they were able to exercise and move. And what they wanted to find out was, in the individuals where they were eating a higher protein diet, did it prevent some atrophy or some loss of muscle size in the leg that was braced? And I think a lot of us have this notion that, okay, if I'm not able to train as much, if I really bump up that protein, it's gonna prevent muscle loss. And while I do think there's certainly value in continuing to take in protein, even at times when we're not able to train with the same kind of efficiency, what this study showed was it really had no impact. That's right. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that muscle protein synthesis or the, or the, the building of muscle really requires movement. And before you get too upset, I also want to give you some good news. Because while this research shows us that you need to keep in some protein um, along with making sure that you're getting a training stimulus, to prevent muscle loss, okay? So detraining really comes down to stimulating the muscle. What I wanna remind everybody is that stimulating a muscle does not have to be done in the gym, okay? We don't need to go to a gym, get under a squat rack to keep leg muscles. In fact, what you can do is just find other ways of training intensity to keep and even continue to build muscle. Well, what do I mean by this? Well, me personally, I've had some knee issues. And so what I thought to myself was, how can I continue to train my legs effectively to keep building them if I'm unable to kind of get in the gym and do some stuff like this? And I found that even under the circumstances of doing things like sled drags or sprints, I've noticed that, man, my legs are really filling back out. And so it's really been fun for me to see that there's other ways of adding muscle. So while you're unable to train at the gym, you don't have to get too upset about this. You know, I have, I have a whole list of workouts that I have my clients do with a home gym setup with as, even as, as little as a dumbbell. And it's been remarkable to see how many people are thriving and you have to really focus on intensity, right? So in the gym, intensity can mean the percentage of your one rep max. So let's say you can lift heavier, you can do like five reps of something, but you can't do that at home. You can't do that with body weight. So how do you allow yourself to continue making progress or keeping muscle when you're at home, well, you keep the intensity high by training closer to failure, which means you might have to do more reps, but this has also been shown in the research. In fact, Mass has done this review before, where training at higher intensities, at lighter loads, you can keep and build muscle, but some of us just aren't used to this, and so that's actually a new stimulus for us. So, if you're gonna do something for, let's say, the legs or the chest, like a push-up or a jump squat, Obviously, you can do a lot more push-ups than you can do a four bench press for reps, right? Or a dumbbell press or whatever you like to stimulate the chest. So, what you'll have to do is start doing intensity techniques like higher rep sets, shorter rest periods, maybe doing some drop sets, cluster sets, things like this that are gonna really allow you to keep the muscle. Ultimately, what it's gonna come down to is finding ways to stimulate the muscle Keep the protein where it needs to be to keep and build muscle. But unfortunately, an immobile muscle group that becomes detrained 
doesn't look like there's a lot of benefit to just upping the protein and preventing that muscle loss. Hey, it's Monday guys. We're off to a great start and I have another great video coming tomorrow. I'm gonna have a guest speaker with me. All right guys, I'll talk to you then.